Hi everyone, and welcome back to Timigate. Today we are diving deep into the world of network address translation. I'll be looking at how to configure network address translation, otherwise known as NAT, on a MicroTik router. So whether you are uh, a seasoned network administrator or you're just getting started with MicroTik, I want you to know that this video is packed with um, insights that will help you to better optimize your network. So NAT, uh, like we all know, is a very critical and crucial aspect of network management. Allowing multiple devices with uh, private IPs to share one or more public IP addresses. So in this video, we are going to be looking at uh, three different methods for configuring uh, NAT on a MicroTik router. But before we jump into the configuration, uh, please make sure to subscribe to this channel, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my tech videos. So now let's jump in. Uh, the topology you see here on your screen is quite simple. I have two hosts, 192.168.10.2 and 10.3. They need to access the internet. The service provider has given us two public IPs. So for us to be able to get to 10.10.10.1, these private IPs here need to be nutted to any of these public IP. I know that these IPs are not public IPs, but for the sake of this lab, we will assume that they are public IPs. I've gone in to configure IP addresses on all of these routers, and I made sure that router one here has no route statement pointing it to this network. So if we stay on router three and router four and try to reach the gateway here, which is uh, 10.1, it should be successful. But any attempt to reach 10.10.10.1 uh, .10 without not happening here, it is going to result in timeout. So let's jump in and see the configuration live in action. So right here on GNS3, I have the uh, devices uh, already powered on. I also have IP addresses that have been configured on the interfaces. The scenario I'm going to implement here is for the exit interface on Ether1. So I'm going to go to router 2 and say that anything exiting this Ether1 towards the ISP should be nutted to this IP 10.10.10.2 which is already configured on this interface Ether2. So here on router 2, let's see the address is configured. You can see that 10.10.2, this IP here has been configured on Ether 1 and 192.168.10.1 has been configured on Bridge 1. So let's implement NAT. IP firewall, NAT, and then we'll add. So we'll say our out interface is equal to Ether 1. And then we we'll say that our chain for the NAT is source NAT. And then we we'll say that our action is equal to masquerade. So this is how quick and easy it is for you to configure NAT using an exit interface. Now let's test it. So we'll go to router three and log right into router three. And then try to ping 10.10.10. .10 .10 .10 one we can see we are getting replies so let's try our router four as well we'll try to type correctly so we are also getting replies here so what is happening is that for anything leaving this uh, router 2's Ether 1 interface is getting matted to the public IP configured on the Ether 2 interface, on the Ether 1 interface, which is 10.10.10.2. .10 .10 See uh, right here on Wireshark, let me just stop the capturing. 
that the echo request here you can see this is an echo request is coming from 10.10.10.2 and it's going to 10.10.10.1 the reply comes from 10.10.10.1 and it goes to 10.10.10.2 and the protocol is ICMP as you can see. So that shows you that not, nothing is actually uh, going on there. Let's configure uh, NAT using another method, this time the source IP. Okay, the danger with this or the disadvantage with what we have just implemented is that if any network is created here, be it 192.168.20.0 or 30.0 or whatever, it is going to get knotted, okay, if it tries to access resources on the internet via the ISP site. Why? Because we have already implemented the rule that says anything leaving this interface should be knotted. So that is not granular enough. What I would want us to do now is to specifically choose the source IPs that should be knotted. So let's go into router 2 and make some modifications. So here on router 2, I'm going to start uh by removing uh the NAT that was previously configured so it's removed now if i check there is no NAT statement here so now let me add a new statement so instead of saying exit interface i'm going to say source address Okay, specify my source address, 24. And I'm going to say the chain is still source not, and then my action is going to still be masquerade. So I've done this now, and I'm saying what it means is that I'm saying that only IPs within this network should be knotted. So let's go back to router three and four and confirm that everything is working as it should. So good enough, we can see that on router 3 we are getting replies. And let's check on router 4. And on router 4, we are also getting replies. Everything is working as it should. So now let's try the third method. Okay, this in this case, we, are, we have two uh, public IPs here. What we have done before is for a situation where we have uh, one public IP. But in this case, we have two public IPs. One is configured on the router's interface. The other one is not configured on the router's interface. Is it going to work? Are we going to be able to make use of an IP that is not configured on the router's interface for nothing? Let's find out. So we head back to router 2. And here we are going to remove the NAS statement that was previously uh, configured. Okay, and try to add a new one. What we are going to be configuring now is known as dynamic NATIN. Chain is source that. And then my source address 192.168.10.0 slash 24. And uh, my action is source not, then to the address I'm not into, equal to 10.10.10.2 to 10.10.10.3. So this has been done. Let's confirm on router 3 and router 4 that everything is working as it should be so we can see that on router 3 everything is working very well we are getting responses uh, let's check on router 4 unfortunately we are not getting replies on router 4 it shows that everything is not working as it should so what could the problem be now if you remember i said earlier that we have 10.10.10.10.2 is it 10.10.10.2 configured on the router's exit interface, whereas 10.10.10.3 is not configured anywhere on this router. So, so what is happening is that as router 4 is trying to exit to the internet, its IP gets knotted to 10.10.10.3. It gets to router 1, but router 1 can't seem to find a way to get back to 
that IP because it is not configured anywhere. So router uh, one doesn't know where it is. So to make that work, the only way to get it to work is to go to router one and configure a static route to get to 10.10.10.3 um, and then point it to uh, this router too. So let's get it done. Now let's configure a route statement to get to 10.10.10.3. With this router 4 should be able to get to 10.10.10.1 and get replies. Here on router 4, you can see that we have replies now. So guys, that's how uh, quick and easy it is for you to implement NAT on your Microtik routers. In this video, we looked at three different ways for doing this. One, using an exit interface. The second one is defining what your source IP address range is. And the third is configuring dynamic NAT, which is for when you have more than one public IP address. If you found this video interesting, please kindly share, like, and drop your comments. Also, do well to make sure that you subscribe to this channel to help us grow. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.